Hey, so what's up guys? Today I kind of wanted to take a look at the PS5 Pro and put it in relation to the PSVR 2. Now, PS5 runs PSVR 2 wonderfully. You can have some truly amazing looking games, but they're often held back by a few technical limitations. A few, but you know, they're still there. Namely, if you look at a game like Resident Evil 4 in VR, Resident Evil 8 in VR, they use 60 hertz reprojected to 120. Now what this means in practicality is that the games feel a lot more sluggish in a way, like when you're turning around and you're doing stuff like that. And if you've ever played a game, you know, using those settings, you'll notice an instant ghosting effect. So if you turn your head or you're just walking and you look to your left, you'll notice that some of the past environment stays there just, just like as a ghost, as a shadow to the current environment. So what I'm hoping with the PS5 Pro which reportedly has a 67% more compute units than the current PS5, 28% faster memory, and up to 45% faster rendering for gameplay, this is just going to be an all-around more powerful console that can actually achieve a native 90Hz for the PS5 Pro. Now, they've already confirmed that they're going to come out with a patch for the PS5 Pro for the PSVR 2, but what that's going to do is that's going to take advantage of their new system called PSSR, which is PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, which is an AI-driven upscaling tool that uses, you know, like a bunch of tech words, machine learning-based technology to provide super sharp image clarity. Now, that's true. Now, what this is going to mean is that all PSVR 2 games are going to be clearer. Now, we don't know at all to which extent they're going to be clearer. I'm hoping it's at least, you know, they take advantage of the... 40 uh, the 67 percent more compute units and make it at least 30 percent more clear and higher resolution by default but that's yet to be seen now what we do know is that if a developer wants to take specific usage of the ps5 pros more compute units they're going to have to release their own patch now what this entails is that a lot of consumers are probably going to like if they get the ps5 pro and they have a psvr2 they're either going to be stuck waiting for that ps5 pro patch to come out which utilizes the psvr2 or they're also going to be stuck waiting for their favorite upcoming game or their favorite game that's already been released to come out with a patch of its own to enable the 90 hertz native now interestingly we have two unique cases i want to talk about on the ps5 already for psvr2 the first being red matter 2 which for my money is resolution wise and graphically just overall the best looking PSVR 2 game that there is. It uses an insanely high resolution. I'm not sure exactly what it is off the top of my head, but I know it's like three times what you know the PSVR 2 lenses are actually displaying. And that results in one of the sharpest images I have ever seen in VR period. Moreover, they use a native 120 hertz refresh rate, something that I don't believe any other game on the system has done yet. I mean, they usually have 90 hertz native, which still looks great, or they have 60 hertz reprojected up to 120. But having 120 native is just kind of a game changer. It just looks so smooth, and the game is so clear. So for my money, that's the best looking game. Then we have an interesting option that just was uh, released with Into the Radius, which was ported over to the PSVR 2 just recently. That is two modes, quality and performance mode. Now, we usually see this in PS5 games all the time, in Spider-Man, Demon's Souls, all these games have them, right? That either display 60 frames per second at a like cost of some graphic fidelity, such as ray tracing or some other enhancement, but you can get the 30 frames with all the enhancements included. And one of the main things they were showcasing with the PS5 Pro is that you will no longer really have to choose between that because you're always going to get the 60 hertz. So, for a game like Into the Radius, where you do have two modes such as in other PS5 games, this is going to be an interesting case because I am hoping that PlayStation is going to make it super easy for developers to implement the new PS5 Pro's power into PSVR 2 games so we can get the 90 hertz, right, non-reprojected, of course, native to the system, while having all of the visual fidelity found in the fidelity mode of a game like Into the Radius. So what I'm hoping is that by having a PS5 Pro with a patch for PS5, VR 2, we are essentially going to be looking at the like a game like Resident Evil 4, where we have the same graphics, right? The same graphics, but instead of having 60 reprojected, we're looking at 90, or potentially, hell, if they could do 120, that would be a miracle. So that's what I'm looking for in VR games. It's not necessarily the resolution bump, which, don't get me wrong, is going to be nice, 
Because, like, if you look at the screenshots they s supplied, for example, everyone was like, these are the same image. So you cannot tell the difference. But in VR, you very much can. And even, like, a 20% boost in resolution you're going to notice. So that's a big deal. But the biggest deal and the biggest flaw with PSVR 2 right now is that reprojection. So for games like Horizon Call of the Mountain, having 90 hertz native is going to be a game changer. And I just hope they don't have to make it all the way up to the developer to utilize the full capabilities of the, P of the PS5 Pro. However, I am you know, well aware that that is 99% going to be the case in terms of frame rate issues. So really, if you're an avid PSVR 2 user and you're thinking, hey, I use this thing every day basically, you know, investing in a higher resolution bump or better frame rates across the board for an extra, you know, once I trade in my old PS5, an extra, like, what, $300? That, for me, is going to be worth it rather than buying a whole PC setup. Now, that's, you know, that's one of the points where I could say, hey, maybe the system might be a good call for you. But, wait. Just, 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 just wait, okay? Because we have no clue when the patch is even going to come out, if developers are even going to take advantage of it, and how anything is going to look on this new platform. So my best advice to anyone, whether you're a PSVR 2 user or not, when regarding to the PS5 Pro, is just wait. It's, it's just wait, because the sticker shock was so much at $700, and for a person like me who, you know, plays physical games all the time, you're going to have to pay, you're going to have to put an extra 80 for that optical disk drive, and if you're going to use PSVR 2 on it, and you're thinking, oh, I'll get it for PSVR 2, we have no clue how so Sony is going to commit to utilizing the PS5 Pro's power on PSVR 2. So they, they could just say that they're going to have a patch and not come out with it for a year, or, or they might even cancel it, or they might have it come out and have it be such a minimal upgrade that it's not even close to worth it. So I'd say just wait, but I am super excited to see how this is going to look. Because if this is utilized effectively, then I would personally say it might make the PS5 Pro justified for me personally, but it would also make the PSVR 2 stand its ground as, you know, potentially one of my favorite VR headsets of all time that I'll be using for years and years to come. It might provide some longevity to it because I'm sick of playing my games at 60Hz reprojected in VR.